Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is palindromic substrings. So in this question, we're given a string s and we have to return the number of palindromic substrings in it. By definition, a string is palindrome when it reads the same backwards as forward. And by definition, a substring is a contiguous sequence of characters within the string. Now let's take these examples and see how we can solve this question. So let's take the first example. We're given the string a, b, c. And let's see what a palindrome is. By definition, a palindrome, if it reads the same left to right, it reads a, b, c. But from right to left, it reads c, b, a. Both are not same, so it is not a palindrome string. But here, if a, a, a is taken as a string, if you read it from left to right, it is a, a, a. And if you read it from right to left, it is still a, a, a. Since both are same, it is a palindromic string. So coming to the brute force approach, this is a uh, method which I have written to check if it's a palindrome or not. So let's do a dry run by taking an example of a, a, a. We take two pointers where start is going to point in the beginning and end is going to point in the end. We check if the characters pointing at start and end are same. Yes, they are same. It skips and comes here. We increment the start pointer one step forward and decrement the end pointer. So start and end are now pointing at a and this while loop will end because this is a single character once these two pointers meet this uh, doesn't matter so whatever the middle letter is it can be anything from a through z it doesn't matter so no need of checking it and once these two pointers meet and if we haven't returned false we can return true as the output so this is a palindromic string so we're going to do the same approach for all the substrings so first i'm going to calculate all the substrings so if we are taking a, a, a as the input, all the substrings are going to be from a starting index. We take i is equal to here and j is equal to at i. So first we take a, this, then we take these two, then we take these three. So the substrings from index 0 are a, a, a and a, a, a. Now we move i forward and j will start from where i is pointing. So i and j are both pointing here. First substring is a and then these two. So we take a and a. Next we move forward and next the last substring is i and j are pointing at the end. So we take this single character. So a is a substring. And now we found all the substrings. So we have to pass all these substrings which we created. So there are six substrings as parameters here. So we take substrings for every string and check if it is a palindrome. So we are going to check for all these strings. So there are total six strings here, right? So we are checking for all six strings and in this case all six strings are palindrome. So we return six as the output. So this is the brute force approach where the time complexity is O of n cube where n is the length of the input string is because we are using nested for loops to form the substring and this inner for loop is again going to use a loop to find out if it is a palindrome. So total O of n cube and the space complexity is O of 1 because we are not using an extra space. Since the input is uh, very small, this code will not give TLE, but this is not the best of approaches to solve this question. Now let's take a look at the approach. So keep this idea in mind how we are going to check if it is a palindrome or not. So let's take this string. So if we take the word radar, this is a palindrome string. So we first check if the single character is a palindrome. Yes, every single character is a palindrome. So now we expand to its left and to its right. Now we check if this character and this character is same. Yes, they are same. So it means this entire string is also a palindrome because we are adding extra strings to an individual palindromic string. And this entire thing is also a substring. And now we expand again from here to its left. And now we check if these two characters are same. Yes, these two characters are same. So it means this entire string in between is a palindrome. And the overall string is also a palindrome. So this is the main idea of how we are going to check. So here in this case, we get seven as our output because every single string is a substring. Write them down. So these are all the single substrings which we form and all of these are palindromic. And this is a palindromic substring A, A. And this is also a palindromic substring B, A, A, B. And the total count is seven. So seven is our output. So now let's see how we are forming that. So first we are going to check the single string if this is a palindrome. So yes, this is a palindrome. We expand to its left and to its right. Now there is no, the index position is minus one and here the index position is one. So there is nothing to check to its left. So you can't form a substring like this. So you move forward. So till now we formed this substring. Now we check here if this is a substring. Yes, this single is a substring. So count that. 
and now expand to its left and expand to its right. Now we check if these two characters are same. A is not equal to B. So this entire thing is not a substring which you can find here. B A is not a palindromic substring so it's not present. Since this is not a palindromic substring, there is no need to expand to its right again because this is only not a palindromic substring. No matter if these two are same, the entire thing won't be a palindromic substring. So you can end the current uh, iteration here. And now we are here. We check if this is a palindromic substring. Yes. So count that. And now we can expand to its left. And now we have to check if these two characters are palindromes are same. No, they are not same. So it means this entire thing is not a palindromic substring. So that is why we are not able to find that here. A, A, B is not found here. And now we can stop the current iteration. No need of going forward. Now we are here. We check if this is a palindromic string. Yes. So count it. Now we expand to its left and to its right. We check if these two characters are same. No, they are not same. So the entire string A, B, C is not a palindromic substring and you can stop the iteration. And now we check here. We check if this is a palindromic substring. Yes. So count it and expand to its left and expand to its right. But if you expand to its right, you are going out of bounds. So this you can't form a substring with this. So you end the iteration. Now we reach the end of the string. But here if you observe, there are two more substrings which we need to find which are palindromic. But how did we miss them? Because we didn't consider two lengths as center as palindromic substring. So a palindrome can be of odd length, which we already checked here. So for example, B O B is a palindromic substring of odd length three. And palindrome can also be even. So for example, A C C A is a even length substring, which has two middle elements. So we have to expand around these two middle elements also. So along with expanding around single characters, we have to expand around a pair of characters. And if that pair of characters are same, then we can expand around that pair. So let's start. We also have to check pairs, right? We check if these individual characters A and B are same, no, they are not same. So there is no point of expanding around this because the middle characters are only not palindromic. So now we go to the next pair. In the next pair, we check this. We check if these two characters are same. Yes, A and A are same. So we consider this as a substring. So you can see that here. So count it. Now, since these two middle characters are palindromic, you can expand around its center. We check if these two characters are same. Yes, B and B are same. So this entire thing is also a palindrome. So here you can see B, A, A, B is a palindrome. Now we consider this string, right? So we are at left is here and right is here. So we have to check if this character and this character are same. Here left is going out of bounds. So you can't consider this entire thing as a substring because here we are going out of bounds. So you end the iteration. So once you go out of bounds to its left or to the right, you end the iteration. There's no need of expanding further. I'll show you during code how you can place that check. And now we go further. We check if this pair, we check if the two characters are same. No, they're not same. So no need of expanding further because the middle elements are not are only not palindromic. Now we check these two. We check if these two characters are same. No, they are not same. So there is no point of expanding to its right because the middle elements are only not palindromic. And now you reach the end. And now you see all the you found all the palindromic substrings. So what are the steps? First, you have to check if odd length substring is palindromic. And again, we have to check even length uh, substrings around its center if it is palindromic. And each time you increment the overall count variable. And finally, you get the overall count variable. Now let's take a look at the code. Coming to the function given to us, this is the function name and this is the input string as and we have to return an integer as output representing the number of palindromic substrings present inside it. So first let us do a check if this input string is equal to null or if the length of the input string is empty, then we can return zero as the output. We can return zero. But here in the constraint, it is said that the length of the input string is going to be between one and thousand. So the test case is guaranteed that there is no empty string. So we can remove this. Now we are going to write a helper function which is going to count the number of palindromes present inside a string with the given limit start and end given as parameters. So we're going to return an integer inside this helper function, I'm going to name it count palindromes and passing a string and a start index and the end index. Now I'm going to create a variable count which will count the number of palindromic substrings and this will be returned for this helper function. And now each time we have to check if the character pointing at start and end. So str.carat of start is equal to str.carat 
of end if these both characters are same then we increment our count variable and for the next iteration we decrement the start pointer and increment the end pointer and these start and end pointers when you decrement them we initially start with the first index right and when you decrement start it becomes minus one then it goes out of bounds and you can't form a substring so we have to place check that if start is greater than equal to zero and and the end pointer should be within this right so end uh, you can find out the last index by taking out the length of the substring so end should be less than the length of the substring str.length so if str.length is 3 so in this is the last index position 2 because index position start from 0 so end should be within that limit and now I'm going to call this function inside the main function and pass uh, the indexes present inside the input stringers so for that we need to iterate through the input stringers from left to right so that we can place this call for every index present inside the input so let's use a for loop where I will start from 0 and I will be less than the length of the input stringers and now we need to return a variable int so let's declare it so this I'm going to call it as total count which will represent the total number of palindromic substrings inside the input stringers and that will be our output so return total count here and now we have to keep incrementing this total count like we discussed on even length palindromics as centers and odd length palindromics as centers so let's start with odd length palindromics so we start with this index and then we expand around this indexes so for example if we are here we expand we first check if this is a palindrome yes because every single digit character every single letter character is a palindrome then we expand around its center so we uh, check if this and this are same if those two characters are same the entire string will also be a palindrome but here they are not so count won't be incremented so I'm going to call this function here first for odd length palindromic and this function is going to take the first parameter as a string so we pass our input string and then the start index and the end index start index for odd length uh, is going to be index i which is going to start from 0 so start is going to be i and end is also going to be i because we are going to take only one letters as odd a letter as centers and now let's copy this and paste it once and for even centers everything is same except the end pointer is going to be i plus 1 so for example if i is equal to 0 so this will be your start pointer and the end pointer is going to be i plus 1 so we are going to expand uh, around this as centers so this is the entire code you get the final output here inside total count now let's try to run the code the test cases are being accepted let's submit the code and our solution is accepted so the time complexity of this approach is o of n square where n is the length of the input string s because we are using a for loop here and for expanding around its centers to the left and right in worst case it will expand the entire string and we are calling it inside the for loop entire time complexity is going to be o of n square and the space complexity is o of 1 because we are not using any extra space to compute this output that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video